All right, Wake Up Wealthy listeners, what's going on? Today I have Phil McCarthy with me. This dude is an absolute legend. We just got connected at NetCon that we were both speaking at a couple weeks ago. Um, There's very, very few people out there, I'm sure you guys know, who I absolutely vibe with everything that they preach. Uh, And Phil and I are on the same same wavelength here. So I'm pumped to have him on. It was a no-brainer, and I'm going to let him give you a little introduction. My God, what's up, bro? Thank you, my dude. I appreciate you, man. Absolutely. You're a good dude, man. So, Absolutely. guys, what is up? My name's Phil McCarthy, and I'm just a dude, man. I'm just a guy, right? Just like you're a man or you're a woman, and Brody's Brody, and we're all just here. Realistically, we're all just here trying to find our purpose, you know, because if we have a purpose, we're pretty damn powerful. And without one, we're the complete opposite, you know? So I have, I have found my purpose in life. Um, I'm pretty fucking powerful and I'm just working, baby. You know, I'm just working. So you want me to get right into a whole, into a whole story, bud? Or yeah, what? A- absolutely. You said, you said some great shit there, uh, with a purpose, we are powerful. I'm going to talk to that. I'm going to, I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. Yeah, man. Like yeah, man. But, uh, yeah, dude, why don't you tell us how you found your purpose? Why don't you tell yeah. us what your purpose is, you know, in yeah. your, in your words. And then why don't you tell yeah. us how you found that? Because that's the biggest thing. This all sounds yeah. nice for a lot of individuals, but it's a daunting task to say, hey, fight, yeah. pay yeah. that, whatever it is, right? Yeah. How'd you yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, stories, you know? Stories fucking sell, baby. So listen, I'm 32, right? At 24, I left the rehab for addiction. And what my purpose is, is to, to just pour into to young men from, you know, I, I really work well with, man. Like, that's why you and I connect because, you know, our purposes pretty much align. You know, we just use different vehicles to get to our destinations, you know. So my purpose is to work mainly with 18-year-olds to, you know, 30. I even work with some dudes that are over 40, you know, because realistically, I just help men become men again. In a world today that breeds betas, literally, it's a beta incubator. So check this out. In the early 90s, men had an average pounds of pressure per square inch of about 115%. Women's were in the 90s, 90 pounds of pressure uh, per pounds of square inch, right? For a handshake, okay? Today, roles are reversed. Today, it's just switch the numbers. Women, huh. on average, have higher pounds of pressure per, per square inch per handshake than a man. What are you doing? What's going on? Roles are flipping. And guess what? God did not intend for roles to flip. Men have more testosterone. Men were designed to protect. Men were designed to hunt. Men were designed to kill. Men were fucking designed to win. And we're being programmed to fucking lose, bro. And it makes me sick. You know why it really makes me sick? And you know why this is my mission? Because I was the dude. I was, I was that guy. I was programmed by society to lose. I was programmed by society to set myself up for failure. I had no confidence. I had no self-esteem. I was weak. I was a beta bitch. And I've turned to false, uh, false instant gratifications to get my fix, to get my feel of, uh, of manlyhood, right? Let me do some drugs. I feel good. Now inside, without me knowing, subconsciously, I feel like a man. Because I feel good. And guess what? It's fake. It's fake and it's false. And that's what's going on in our society today. Jump in front of Lamborghinis, hop on jets, rent this, buy that. I'm so cool. Check me out. So then it tells people, well, if I'm not doing that, then I'm not a man. Right? This is all subconscious now that I'm talking. This is what other dudes are reading. Well, if I'm not doing that, then I'm not a man. I'm a beta. But I want to be a man. So I got to do that to be a man. But guess what? It's just producing realistic betas, not realistic alphas. And yeah. as men, that's what we need to become. Like a, a, a true alpha's main concern is growth. That's it. That's it. If you're focused every, with every decision, every action you take, every thought you have, and it's backed with the thought of, am I growing here? Am I, am I growing? Is the world I'm on growing? Is my team growing? Who I'm leading? Who I'm surrounding myself with my family? Are we growing? That will, uh, that will tell you when you need to put your ego aside, when you need to use your ego for what it's for. That will tell you when you should eat that giant whole pizza or know you, you've had enough for the day. You know, you've hit your numbers, your calories. Like, if it's always backed with growth, you can never lose as long as you're conscious enough to make the right and mindful enough to make the right decision. And, and that will lead you to be a true alpha. And that's what I do. I teach people how to understand that. And I teach people how to become that, bro, because I literally went through it. Now, you might say, like, 
So we were like, all right, so what do you do? And then why do you do it, right? The reason I do it is because literally I was that man. I almost took my life. It was like, we could replay the whole scenario. And sometimes I do, but I don't like to get into the whole damn thing. It's dark, it's dirty, it's sad, it's, it's, it's miserable. Just know it was the deepest part of my life. And no matter who you are or where you are right now, you can relate in one way or another. Because whether it's drug addiction and taking your life, it's gambling, or it's that girl that left you and she broke your motherfucking heart and you yeah. think literally your world has ended. I remember that day. I, I'd rather be drug addiction again than, than my first girlfriend breakup. I thought the world was over. It ain't right. over. It's not over, fools. It's only going to get better if you can allow that breakdown to make you a man enough to break through. And that's what I do. And that's what I did. And that's what I want fucking men in this world to do. Because guess what? If you don't, the world has a way of weeding out the weak. And you deserve to be weeded out. You deserve to be died off and killed off. If you can't grow and become better and serve this earth that you're standing on, then be gone. And people say, when I say this, people be like, that's harsh, that's harsh. What about you, bro? What about when you were going through that shit? I'd say, so be it. I would either break through or I'd break. So be it. I don't want to take. I'm done. I don't want to take anymore. The world doesn't need any more takers. It needs givers, over deliverers. Yeah. And that's what we do, bro. Dude, I love that. I love that. Cause you know, I, I'm about literally a ton of that. We have similar past. Um, so, you know, what I want to ask you there is, when was that breakthrough moment though? When did you, when did you, yeah. I mean, because like, here's the deal, the change, the change happens over time, but it really happens in an instant, right? Like when you, yeah. when did you make the decision, you said you left a rehab center at 20, yeah. right? Yeah. But you know, was that it? Or was there a time after that where you were so yeah. and doing that whole deal? Like when did you fucking decide? To yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Like you said, like it is in a moment, but it's like, it's not. It's, yeah, it's, there's it's, a people say here. like, yeah, and then you hear people too, they'll be like, I can remember, and they explain in the vivid detail because, you know, details are, you know, so uh, dramatic and, and they paint this vivid picture that like, oh, and it's really just a cell. Like, there's no exact moment, but there is, you know? So this is just me being like open and real. You know, yeah. the night I was about to take my life, that was like my moment. But it also wasn't my moment, man, you know? That was the night where I was just like, I was broken down i was like sick of crying myself to sleep for a few weeks like i was just disgusted right but i didn't know what to do i didn't have the uh tools it's like okay i want to build a house to live in but i don't have a hammer nor nails nor wood to construct so like i'm just going to get rained on you know what i mean and that's yeah. how a lot of people are in life they're just getting rained on they don't really have the tools in the toolbox so even though i had that one desire i didn't make that real committed decision right because how could i I was, I was trained to complain. I was, I was trained to blame. I was trained to live in a victim state. You know what I'm saying? So I just kind of stayed there even though I wanted it. Well, I remember the night like sitting on my floor and, and you know, I didn't have electricity. Now I make residual income on electricity. I didn't have running water. Uh, like I just was like broken down. I was about to take my life. And you know, like I said, there's a whole story. I could go through the yeah, thought yeah. processes. I looked at the dog. The dog made me think about my mom, my family, and selfishness, and so on and so forth. But, you know, a miracle happened. And the next day, my mother calls me and says, uh, you know, if I set something up, like, for you to go to a rehab, will you go? And I said, yeah, 100%. But I remember that was the scariest thing in my in my life. Like I, bro, I knew I needed that more than anything in the world. Our heart, our gut, our instincts, it's not fucking bullshit. It's there for a reason. Yeah. The pro what is bullshit is your commitment to act on it. That's what's bullshit. So no matter how scared I was, dude, I just like listened to it. And I, I remember it sounds crazy. It's like, yeah, but you knew it was so good for you, but it was the last thing you wanted to do. So it was like, I just did it. I was like, I'm just going to go. Like, I'll go through withdrawal. I'll go through pain. But guess what? The pain I'm in today, here's when you'll succeed, my friends. When the pain of where you are today is greater than the pain of doing the work. And that's what it was. It was like, I'll do the work because this, I'm going to die. It's grow or die. What are you going to do, bro? Pick one. Break down or break through. Grow or die. What the fuck is it? What the fuck is it? So I had made these little little mini mental decisions, right? The night before, over the past few weeks. Crying myself to sleep. Bunch of bullshit. But, but didn't have the toolbox. Guess what? Somebody handed me a hammer. It was my mom. Saying, go to the fucking rehab. I'm going to set you up. Boom. I had one tool. I grabbed the motherfucker. I put it in my box, bro. Okay, then it was, I went to the, I went to the joint. I went there the next day. I was scared as shit. Guess what? Here's a fucking saw and a fucking screwdriver, meaning this 
Jackie is therapist that now I look at them and think like, I'd shit on you with, you're just taught what you're taught in school. But guess what? They were still a blessing. It was a saw. It was just a dull saw. Could still cut wood. I could put it in my toolbox. I started to gather these tools and use them, bro. And then I walked out of that rehab 16, just 16 days later, because nowadays they're set up to just fucking pay, pay, pay the system, take yes. the money from the insurance, yep. get you in, take as much, get you out, so on and so forth. People relapse, go back through. And that's why I've got, that's why like, like, oh man, I can go so in depth and I'm getting fired up. Like I, I, I believe with full intent and commitment that I'll shit on like 99% of the rehabs out there. I believe that if somebody was with me full time, I'll, I will, I will do a better job, a quicker job, more efficient job. I will more equip them for life in a shorter period of time than any fucking rehab out there. I did it. I did it. And like, it's like school. It's like, ready? You, bro, yeah. your kid, your kids. Go, I, I see you have a little beautiful baby. Your kid's going to be a fucking beast. Your kid's going to be a millionaire at 15 and only a millionaire because of the mindset, because of yeah. the tools you put in his toolbox, bro. So we already know the school systems don't do what we do. So why would the healthcare system? We already know that does too. So on and so forth. Neither does help and re rehab someone. So anyway, bro, here I went on a tangent because I'm getting fired up at this bullshit. That's why we got to do what we do to change it, my man. And that's why, I, yeah, I'm just thankful for you. But um, I walked out of the doors. It was September 11th, or no, September 16th, 2011. And that was when the decision actually, that was the moment, dude. Like that was the real, like, because, you know, we commit to some things, you know, but we kind of half commit, yeah. right? People yeah, do it all the time. Commit. Totally. Yeah, I'm going to start working out. And you go for two weeks. And that's awesome. You went every day for two weeks, but then you stopped. There was something that nobody can say or feel or anything but you. Wasn't, wasn't a congruent commitment. Wasn't yeah, alive. the degree of commitment was not as strong as it could have been, right? But yep. when I walked out of those doors, bro, there were these two big wooden double doors with these big fucking gold handles on them in this shithole of a place. But I remember they shine like the golden gate of like going to heaven or something. I remember them so vivid. And I open them up and I walk through them and I'm like 10, 20 feet away and I'm with my father. He picked me up and I turned around and I looked at him and I just said, I'm never going back. I'm never going back. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I better start to do. And something else, like, bro, we're gifts from God. Like we are gifts from God. He, like, I just know I'm a gift from God. It's just the way it is. He would tell me things. I don't know how or why. You know how people say that? Like he was never like, Phil, you have to do more if you want to become more, right? right. But that's what I heard. Like you got to do more if you want to become more, bro. Like you're a bitch. You're a fucking bitch. Like go to work. Go to work. And I took full responsibility and you call it full ownership, I think, right? Yeah. I took full responsibility, bro. I went home right away and I started, I still had withdrawal symptoms. My hands were sweating. I was fucking, I was just, it was fucking shitty and horrible. But I kept yeah. remembering how horrible it was, yeah. you know, prior to that, right? And I literally had uh, like withdrawal symptoms for like at least a month after I left every rehab. So at least 30 days, still having symptoms. But what I did was I put myself in a state to become somebody who was succeeding right away. Because when you can succeed in an instant, then you have momentum. And when you have momentum and you can carry it through and continue, now you have something, you can see results, and you can see a light at the end of the tunnel, and you can see a purpose, and you can build some internal belief and faith. And I just kept that chain, train, train moving. And just like a train, you shovel coal in, you shovel coal in. Don't, you stop shoveling coal, the bitch is gonna shut down. Don't stop shoveling coal, man. I went and I researched, I said, how does the human body work? And that's what I did. I became a, people are like, you a personal trainer? I've never in person personally trained anybody. Never. But I'm a people trainer. I learned how people work. I learned how our vehicle, that's all this is, is a vehicle to carry out our mission or the lack thereof. I learned how it operates. And then I learned how to manipulate it to produce my desired result, my desired outcome. So if my body had stopped, shut, stopped production of chemicals that made me feel good, okay, mm -hmm. and put me in a state to be happy and productive, okay, how do I release them? Because I know it's not going to bring them back because it's been getting the fake ones for so long. Now it's shut down the natural production of them. So yeah. what do I have to do? Okay, because this is why people relapse. Now they're depressed. All right, well, let's mm -hmm. turn back to what made me feel good. Drugs or gambling or that ex-girlfriend or whatever it may be, even though you right. know she's bare for you and so on and so forth. Right, whatever, I've been through it all. whatever the chemical trigger is. Exactly, it's just a chemical trigger. So yeah. guess what? Pull the right trigger. Pull the trigger that's not gonna kill you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't point the trigger, don't point the barrel of the gun at you, bro. You know what I so mean? How, so how were, how were you doing at that at that time? So I think, you know, everybody- Exercise, listen. right away, exercise. Exercise, yeah, number one, that's what I researched. Number one way to release the chemicals, you know, the happy chemicals, the, the sales chemicals, the EDSOs, endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin. Each one individually does something. You know, like oxytocin is real cool because you get that when you interact with people. Yeah, when you yeah, help yeah. people, oxytocin is released. You know, you don't need other people to release. Ready? 
here, dopamine is crazy addictive, super addictive. Dopamine is released from a damn like on your fucking Instagram page. Instagram is the modern day heroin. Yep. The problem is the government and everyone else doesn't want you to know it because that's how they get you to buy shit. That's yeah, the deal. Totally. The government Dude. is a fucking drug, bro. And I've gone, I've gone through that in, uh, you know, post addiction, right? Like I, then I came from a very poor family. I was this kid who started making money really quickly. Like I went from nothing to making very good money really fast yeah. because, you know, I was a high achiever and I was super yeah. dialed in, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't know what to do with money at that time. It made me uncomfortable and spending money hit the dopamine. Right, so I was buying yeah. watches, oh, bro. Clothes, all sorts of shit. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. There are there are so many things like that we're not even aware of that releases these chemicals. Yeah, a thought you can create a thought, and a thought alone without any action will release a chemical. So that's why they say you know thoughts are so powerful because your feelings will take cause you to take an action or a lack thereof but your feelings are produced by thoughts and so on and so forth. So when you can back engineer the process and you know how to, you know, deconstruct the building that's standing, rip that bitch apart, get a new blueprint, which is your identity. Start from the beginning and okay. re redraw out your built blueprint. Just like you would for a house. You can redraw that bitch out and become literally a new person. And that's pretty powerful. Maybe people like you or I are like, we're like, we don't need to rip this. We don't need to rip yeah. these bitches down. But you know what we do need to do? We need to constantly be downloading new software. We need yes. to constantly be. So tell, so tell me this, dude. Uh, because I, was, I, I tried to break it down. Like, I obviously like totally receive everything you're saying, right? I try to break it yeah. down as much as possible for the listener. Yeah. Right? Like, all of this seems amazing, right? But then think about what comes up in the everyday man's life who is somewhere on his journey to being an alpha. Right, we're talking yeah. limiting beliefs, self doubt, low energy. Yeah. Right, like, and for everyone listening, like Phil, yeah, he made the decision. Like he said, he opened those doors. Like, boom, that's the decision. But that was still eight years ago, right? Like, yeah. there's a fucking process. You know, mm -hmm. what have been some of the road, but like speed bumps along the way, roadblocks, obstacles. You know, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You don't go from someone who, because dude, I was a bitch too, totally weak, scared of my thoughts, scared of yeah, 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 right. And to be able to attract the things into your life in the manner that we have, you have to be com committed and congruent in your beliefs, in yourself, in yeah. your out, in your outcomes, and everything that is happening. You know what? Like, how would you get? How would you get it, dude? Because now, you, now you have certainty, but you couldn't always. Yeah. No, hundred percent. No, no. I did have full. I did have belief though. And that's yeah. why I say it, it all starts with belief. Everything starts with belief. Every single thing. Companies, organizations, charities, who you become, who you don't become, what you do, what you don't do. It all starts with belief or the lack thereof, man. I did have belief. I did have certainty in my belief. You know, so go, prior going through all that shit and that night that I was going to take my life, there was something inside me, and we all have this, that told me you're meant to do something big, bro. Don't be a pussy. That was it. Was that, that was it. You know? That was the belief. You had belief in the fact that you were supposed that to. That was like, case. yeah, that was like a little, like a little ember burning, bro. It's like, it's like, you know, I had this, it's like, I believe as humans, we all start with this big bonfire and then our parents, our teachers, society kind of pisses on it and it gotcha. starts to go out. And then, you know, now we're in this state of just like, it's still burning because we're alive. And it wants to come back to life, but you have all this, you know, it rains and there's shit just keeping it down. And, you know, how strong is that burning desire inside? And, you know, are you going to allow it to ignite and, and, and put it in the right environment? You know, but here I go off on another damn tangent. But here, here's what it did, bro. I, I didn't have any certainty. I didn't have anything, but I did have belief. I did have belief in myself. I did have belief that, you know what? The only reason I'm not doing what I need to do is because my subconscious is telling me that that's not my identity. You know, so I literally rewrote my identity right away. I didn't know Good. to the degree that I do Take now. Now I can show people how to do it in minutes, you know, but I didn't know what I did then. That's what I'm saying. Like I definitely was super, super blessed because I didn't have people like 
you know, you're like, people are in these places. What do they do? They're doing exactly what they're doing right now. You got to get, you got to fuck with the right people. You got to fuck yeah. with Brody's. You got to fuck with Phil's. You have to fuck with the right people. You can maybe do it on your own, but I rarely hear stories of, of myself. I feel I'm super blessed, bro. Like something spoke to me. Something like told me to do these things. I began to work for people for free. If anybody, here's what, here, things were telling me things, bro. It's actually crazy and powerful when you think about it. Like something told me you are here because you appreciate nothing. So if you can learn to appreciate nothing, then you'll be able to appreciate everything. So I didn't appreciate my six figure job and I did drugs and showed up late every day. Right. I didn't appreciate my family. I didn't appreciate a girl, my girlfriends. I didn't, I didn't appreciate my cars. I didn't appreciate anything. Took everything for granted. So then what I did was said, now that I walk out of this rehab, I said, if you, exactly that, right? If you can learn to appreciate nothing, then you'll be able to appreciate everything. And I'd work for people for free. So anybody who ever did anything for me or not, if I didn't even know them, like if somebody needed me, I was there. I'd hold doors. I'd just over deliver, over give. And then I'd work for people for free that did me big favors in life. They would try and pay me after months. And I'm like, I don't want your money. I don't want your, I had a roof over my head. I had a small part-time job at this nutrition store. I had just got into working out, right? I had enough money. I moved back in my mom at 24, 25. That was a good hit of my pride. But again, again, I knew I'd right. put aside my pride to become That's somebody. That's important. Super man. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A man knows when to do that, right? Because it goes back to growth. If your main concern is growth, you're going to say, what's the best for my growth here? And it'll always pull you back into the right direction if you pull it back to that one question for yourself. That's super powerful. Every fucking thing you do or don't do is this growing me and the people around me in the world I'm on. Because yeah, dude, I, always I, 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 I want to I want to pause you there uh, because I want to talk about that that humbling moment, and I really want the listeners to pay attention here because this is this was such an important part of my development, you know. Yeah. So like, and just to share with you, I'm sure like this the listeners know it, but like. I got sober for a year, uh, started to make a bunch of money, and then had a three-month relapse. I, okay. I got rid of my entire first, you know, six figures that I made. I just put it away <laughs> yeah, yeah. on yeah. shit, you know. I ended, up, I ended up having to sell the Rolex that I was so attached to. Uh, I had always had pretty decent cars. I had to drive this $800 uh, Ford Ranger four speed it took i had to shift four times to get to 35 miles an hour <laughs> and i was driving this thing around and you know just not that long ago i had thought i was hot shit and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was important like that was very important because then dude i would have rebuilt no matter what but i would have i would have rebuilt with ego again yeah, and then yeah, i probably yeah. would have drank again with the wrong intentions dude with right the wrong intentions 100 percent. yeah as soon as you're telling me this i'm like I, you and I both know that we're, that we're, we're, you're both glad that that happened. Yeah, totally dude. Because I mean, yeah. without that. And so I, you know, the message to the young male struggling with this is ditch that fucking pride because it serves nobody. Yeah. 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 See, see you, all you're doing is comparing your pride to people who don't really have any. Right. You get that? That's yep. all people are doing. That's all you were doing. That's all I was doing. Cause like, even when I got my shit together and I was good and I was straight and I never got back into the drugs again. I still ran off some of the later things once I started to make money again. I was buying $100,000 sports cars. I was, buying, I was doing yeah. things I would, I, that the Phil today won't do. And this is only three years ago. You know what I'm saying? Right. But we're comparing ourselves and our pride to people who really don't have – I have true pride. I can 100% say that with commitment, that I will put other human beings before I put myself. That's fucking pride, bro. That's real fucking commitment. That's, that's fucking – real ownership as you would call it bro and i can yeah. say that with full belief full like all we're doing is I, I see some of these dudes i met at some of these things and they act even if you are even if you're rolling rolling in the dough which i know you're not rolling this kind of dough because you're renting jets you know like like what is the deal with the red carpets and the jets and the watches and all this shit like you could be given back to humanity with that now i'm not saying don't earn and buy nice shit i'm just yeah. saying i know for a fact that you don't have it like that. And you know what? A lot of people, like, I, listen, it all comes back to where you come from. That's why you and I do what we do, bro. And that's why the world needs motherfuckers like us more than any, any other motherfucker out there. The world doesn't need Rolexes and Lamborghinis. Do I love them? Fuck yeah, they're cool. Fuck Will yeah. I ever buy them? Fuck yeah, one day I will. But guess what? It's going to be when my impact is so much greater than the impact on my wrist. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like, and, and that, that I don't see an equal exchange of value out there with a lot of these people. And, uh, it's not dude. It, and I'm, it gets me like, I'm glad we're here at this topic and this point in this conversation, because it gets me fucking heated. Like there's nothing. That yeah. Good. It should, off. bro. 
It should. There's nothing that pisses me off more now than like looking out there, seeing people follow. And, and the, the, like the thing, it, the fucked up part about it is, is like I get yeah. why these young guys are so drawn to it because I would have yeah. been you. But now knowing what I know, they're preaching the wrong shit. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. cool. And then they're using like, that to sell on. To lifestyle is cool. And, but like, yeah. dude, you're motivating people the wrong way. Yeah. You were, you were yeah. putting... Yeah. Not only shitty, you're putting yeah. shitty fuel in their fucking tank. Like, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. Seven is unleaded. You're putting like forty three in there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's just that's not that's the right world. fucking fuel, man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Not yeah. at all. Yeah. There's, like there's big guys out there who people follow. The problem with what we talk about creating yourself, it's not sexy. It's fucking hard. Like, yeah. it's not sexy yeah. because you have to do the deep work. You have to do the real shit. Earlier, you were yeah. talking about identity. Yeah. Dude, yeah. people will never even look in the mirror for a second. To I know, think about I know. Who am I actually? Yeah. And who do yeah. I want to become? Yeah, the only way you can create a new identity and, 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 and get to work on that is to rip down the old one. So you, you have, have to, to drop it, literally dude. start, yeah, you got to start fucking yourself up and saying, fuck, man, this is not good with me. I, I, I put myself first over this situation here. Why would I do that? It just hurt that person and didn't even do me any good. It was just that instant gratification. Blah, blah, blah. And you got to start tearing yourself down. I speak dude, over I, people. I, I, I do this. I, I, do I, that. Heard, I heard this quote the other day. You're going to love this. Uh, dude, there's this guy out there. He's, I guess he's a big YouTuber. His name's Aaron Dowdy. And imagine if, imagine if we were like a little less manly and like five times more spiritual. Uh, that okay, would, that's what he's like. <laughs> yeah, that would be him. Uh, he, don't get me wrong. He kicks ass. His content's amazing. But he, uh, he said... Dude, he said, if you don't want to repeat the past, you have to complete the past. And he was talking about identity. And I was like, dude, that's heat. Like, that's just such yeah. a good, simple yeah. one to understand. Yeah, like, you yeah, have yeah. to do the deep work. Whatever it is that you're holding on to, whether it's that guy that yeah. has the money issues, the guy who gets broken up with by girls, the guy who yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't lose the weight because he can't lose. Yeah. Like, whatever it is, you have to disidentify from that before you can ever yeah. – truly be the person that you want to be because even if you get a little bit of it you'll revert back yeah 100 percent. you 100 percent, and that's that internal subconscious can i, can I roll yeah. on to something real quick go, because go. you're asking me like how right like how do people you know because they hear you and like i'm just saying i'm blessed yeah in fact something spoke to me but essentially what i did and what we need to do as individuals is we need, we and you know this is we need to change up our environment the environment is the quickest thing that you can change but also the most powerful thing that will have the most powerful impact on where you go next and, and what it is that you actually do so all i did was really change up my environment so we change up our environment and then by default what we do whether we know it or not is we rewrite our, re our identity right so we get take it back to our identity well how do i rewrite my identity if i want to become a new person essentially from the ages of zero to seven that's when we're programmed we are computers we are machines we are vehicles we, we fucking are you know yep. we can go deeper into it but that's what we are we have firings and wirings and that's the way we work we do damage There's a standard to them. operating we're, we're, procedure like exactly yeah, yeah you know so we are programmed and we're programmed by our environment if you were born in the woods and living with a bunch of monkeys that's where dan what is that tarzan like that's where he came from you know what I mean? Like, well, dude, we, it's all we, literally last night, my wife yeah. and I, and so we just started feeding crews, uh, you know, a little bit of real food. And she, she was feeding him and she said, you know, it's funny. He's just got shit all over his face and doesn't even care. And he I'm like, yeah, care. well, you know, no one's ever told him he should. Like, yeah. 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 Dude, that's yeah. really good. Cause we would be like, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, shit. Right. <laughs> but you don't care. Okay, sir. Sorry, sir. I hope you're having a terrific day, my friend. Yeah. Hey, I'm from the West. I was born and raised right here, my guy. That's funny. Anyway, That's funny. <laughs> the nice gentleman there didn't like that I said the S word. Oh. I think you need to realize that we're in 2020 and life's hard. <laughs> so we need to be able to handle the damn curse word. It's not soft anymore. So, um, what did I say? We're That's, talking about dude, that's like, baby, right? hold on. Yeah, the yeah. What? I'm leaving that in. I'm leaving that in. Leave Just it in great, there. 100%. Great day. I hope you're having a great day. Like, Fuck yeah. Like, that was not, <laughs> yeah. that was not, okay. That wasn't a you problem. Yeah. That was a him dude. problem, dude. That was a him problem. Yes. 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 Like I'm not coming at you, man. No, not, like, I have nothing was, to do with you. Right. Why are you, see, that's what people do. People literally today in this day, literally look for things to take personally. 
Like, right. I would never be like, oh, my God, that dude said the N-word. I'm going to get offended by it. Like, come on, man. You dude, know what I mean? I, like, You know, this is a great time, and we'll come back to the, the conditioning. Yeah. Dude, we could go uh, for six hours. Yeah, I know. Back. But, like, this is a great <laughs> time. Like, that scenario right there is the same reason – that individuals project themselves on you when you start to find success, when you start to put out content, when you start yeah. to be passionate about yeah. your message, your, yeah. flame, your ember starts to burn a little more, like they're gonna yeah. try to take like this. Yeah, and then most people won't handle it like that because they don't know how to handle it. So they allow that negative energy to become a part of them. I won't allow that energy to become a part of me, bro. You yeah, can't exactly. contaminate. My energy is power, too powerful anyway. My, my energy, he, he literally kept walking. He couldn't, he could feel me. He didn't need to speak to me. He could feel me, you know what I'm saying? That's what you want to do. When you want to walk in a room, you yeah. want people to feel you. You want to be so powerful. Words were designed to hide feelings. That's what I believe words were designed for. When you operate on a certain state, you don't even need, it's like me and Caleb, bro. Caleb Max, we don't even really need to talk. We'll just like jump, do something, just like look, boom, we know exactly what it is. Boom, done. It's like you and I, we could just flow for six hours doing this because yep. even though we're talking, we still operate on a frequency that matches one another, my guy. Oh yeah. So let's talk about how to get yourself into that frequency and in that state and into that identity. Do now that. you are what you are because you were programmed that way from the ages of zero to seven. I can go into a story that proves that, but who cares? Just take my word for it. I know you do. Now from seven on, we operate under that subconscious programming. So it's like a tape recorder, but this tape recorder has been going on for seven years, 10 years. That's a lot of hours. You can't be like, I'm positive. I'm happy. And I'm, and I'm handsome and a good person. And all of a sudden you rewrote that program. You, it doesn't work like that. You can do it consciously, but it takes a lot of conscious effort. Essentially, we as a tape recorder, let's go back to the recording and the program. You have to know how to hit the button on your tape recorder and re-download, re, uh, re, reabsorb a new program and now run off that program. And that's what you do. And that's what we do with people. That's what we've done over you know, my uh, eight, 10 year period now. But I've learned to able, be able to, I've learned to literally hit the button. I was always guessing, like, where, how do I hit the button? Where's the button? What do I do? Yeah. Now, when I hit the button, what do I re-record over it? And so on and so forth. You just have to learn how to hit the button, re-record over your subconscious. And I use the vehicle of fitness because the body is the subconscious mind. You have the conscious mind, which is your thoughts that you're aware of. Then you have the subconscious mind, which is sub, below the surface. That's what really tells your conscious what to do and think. 80% of your day, actually, they say it's more than this, but 80% of your day is habitual. You wake up, you shower, you do your stuff, you brush your teeth, you go to work, you hop on this, you do that. Like, it's all, you feed your babies. You, it's all kind of habitual. And okay. that habitual stuff is ran by your subconscious. So the way we rewrite it is, if the body is the subconscious mind, well, how do we get the mind to be reprogrammed? Let's take different actions with the body and the mind will follow. And you do it enough because the, the, the body will always bring the mind back to the state. So if your mind is in a poor, low level, low frequency, low level thinking, you know, bad thoughts with money, bad thoughts with habits, bad thoughts with women, bad thoughts with uh, your lifestyle and health and your fitness, your body will always take habitual habits that bring it back to that state, even if you think opposite. So what I did was I just flipped it. Instead of trying to do the mind first, even though that's what I did, and then my body followed, but I was different. Now I do it with people who don't understand. I take the body first. Yeah. No, I take I the body that. first because- the motion is, follows the emotion. The motion, the emotion follows the motion. Boom, yep. we take the body and then we move on to the mind from there. And that's what I do. Yeah, and no, by I default, you it. get a six pack and you get jacked, you know? Right, and so I, I've actually made a video about this since we met because I, lo I love the way that you frame that because, okay, so guys, pay attention to this. Like, emotion is just energy in motion, right? So if you want to create more emotion, you got to have more emotion. You yeah. got to create yeah, yeah, yeah. energy. You got to get that shit yeah. going. And yeah. you know, see, I didn't. I didn't start with my body. I started with my mind. I was, you know, and I was starting with my habits. And I was doing well, right? But I, I was having to do way more work to get my to re-record that tape. You know, I, I always say, talk to yourself more than you listen to yourself, because my subconscious yeah. tape was bad. So I was literally, I wasn't like, hey, like yeah. I'm a great person. I'm successful. I'm powerful. Like yeah, I was yeah, like. Yeah saying that a hundred times a day, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get the, yeah, yeah, yeah. get the momentum going. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. dude, start and, it did, and it worked. And that's what you have to do. If you're going to do it that way, that, you got to do it. That worked. The great thing about yeah. the body though, and vigorous physical activity is that it clears the mind. It purges weakness. It purges negativity. See, dude, mm -hmm. I didn't really claim my true power 
until the last six months when I started running. You know, I've always lifted okay. hard or whatever, but like running is my thing. You saw I ran that marathon two weeks ago. In December, I couldn't run a mile. And I was, I lifted, I was fit or whatever. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, dude, running, I chose it because I hated it more than anything in the world. You, here, here's what you did. It is a body and a mind, right? We have a vehicle yeah. with a computer and so on and so forth. You put this, the mind, you put the computer under such severe pressure that it caused you to, to clear that hard drive and download new software. But you never yeah. really did it with this. So, so you were on your way and you were there, but you were never like whole. And until we're it was really never working on everything. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Congruence is a great word. Alignment, right? How can you uh, expect, how can individuals expect to operate up here if only some of it's up here and then they take little dips? Right, yep. but then they come back up and then they say, we gotta operate, our values and beliefs have to align with our actions and our thoughts. Yeah, no, that's super good. And dude, that's why like, you know, I'm sure in following me now since we've met, like my entire approach to life is 1% better every day in mind, body, spirit, business. Because so many times in my life, I would have mind and business, but body and spirit would be low. And then I would focus yeah, on yeah, body yeah. and spirit and mind and business would be low. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it wasn't until I, I focused on having those four in alignment that I was able to show up powerfully across all areas of my life. Yeah, yeah. And now you just keep growing and growing. Like when we met, which was like, I don't know, it was a month and a half, it wasn't even longer, a month and a half ago. Bro, like, I've grown so much. Right. I've literally changed my environment up. I left Philadelphia. You moved across the country. To, I moved across the country to get myself around even more people that are even crazier. Like, like, bro. And then you're doing the same thing. You're growing and you're changing. Like, what are we doing? All we're really concerned with in the end, you and I, is growth. That's and it. guess what? Our growth is exponential to the average. Exponential to the average, bro. Why That's why we that? went from here to here. Why? Yeah, why? Why are guys like you uh, and I growing at such a faster rate? I believe that when you have um, – people say don't compare. And maybe you shouldn't compare, right? Uh, I, I, I kind of do compare myself to the right people. I don't compare myself to the people who – like meaning like, you know, we, we compare ourselves to the Rolexes and the Jets and stuff. But there are men that don't really have real pride anyway. So why are we comparing yeah, yeah, ourselves yeah, to yeah. them? But, I'll tell you my thought on comparison here after this. Yeah, but, but I have a, a past life to compare to. And like I said, that was so painful, bro. You know, I want people, you know how I would rewire the human race and, and I would put people in a fucking death simulator. I would put them in a death simulator where they don't know it, but they're going to go through an experience where they're going to come close to near death, but it's so near and dear to their heart in some way. It makes that in internal shift. The stronger the emotional potion, the more attached we are to the cause. The more attached we are to the cause, the more willing we're, we are to go to work on that cause and change. And that's what I did, bro. Like, it sounds crazy, like death, simulated death. Guess what? Now you have something to compare. Now you have something to compare your lack of a life to. And maybe, just maybe, the shit you took for granted before, you ain't going to take for granted no more. And what did I just do? I just explained what I went through, right? Yeah. That's exactly what I did. And I know it works because I went through it. And people say, what do you want to do? And what is it? And how? And why? I want to change the world. Well, why do you? It's cliche and cool. You know why I want to change the world, bro? Because my world changed and I should be dead, but I'm here. I'm not, you know? And it's like, what is the world? The world is really just one person's world. That's all it is. Because if you take that one person away, the world's dead to them. But when we can all literally love and appreciate and grow in this world, then we have a place where it's worth all living on together. And we're that's, all growing our individual worlds together. That's, that's super deep. Uh, you know, that, that and another, if you flip that same mindset into looking at time, what you're really talking about is being present. Say it again, there's what? I said, when you flip that same mindset, like I love what you just said. You said everything in the world is just one person, right? Because yeah, if that yeah. person dies, to their, their view to them is dead, right? Then yeah, you, the world's over. You get into the talk of, well, really, if you look at that, you know, you're talking about collective consciousness, which is like there. And then you're talking, th that's like the attraction of frequencies, how you and Caleb Maddox got together, like all that shit. Yeah, yeah. A and then, dude, when it comes down to that, like you're talking about, you're talking about being present. Yeah, that's true presence is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually like, so I, that's a really, really big driver for me. Um, and what, when it first popped off in my head is when we were talking about comparison. So okay. I used to compare myself a lot. I would look on social media, there'd be people doing crazy shit. I, you know, I just, and it was all really negative to me. And I love when you said that you have a, you had a 
different life to compare it to because so did I. That's the only time I allow comparison in my life because I then express gratitude because I can, yeah, literally, yeah. It, I could literally be on the street, like homeless. And as long yeah. as I'm not doing drugs, like it's better than my old life, you know? Yeah. 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 So like everything at that point becomes great. And then like, you know, I, I've always really struggled too with like thinking about the future, thinking about the past and if you were thinking about the future, you're anxious, right? If you're thinking about the past, you're depressed. For me, everything, all the good relationships, all the results and everything that I do, it is in being present. Like I focus on today and that's it. Go all in today. And then when tomorrow comes, right, it's actually still today. It's always just today. So if you're yeah, going all yeah. in for today, that's how you create the results. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that, bro. 100%, dude. That's fire, man. Ugh, that's that's my stuff. jam. Just like... So you know what? As I'm, go, go ahead. As I'm was, listening to you, I'm thinking, like, it's like my story, your story, right? They're both, like, rock bottoms or whatever you want to call them. And then I just... I'm thinking about how, like, people are probably watching this. Because people have asked me, like, well, what if you haven't gone through really hard stuff but what still want to come out with that attitude that, that you all do, right? Yeah. And then it's, it's simple. It's just perspective. Yeah. You know, so I want people to understand that it's just perspective, perspective, your perspective will determine your outcome. You know, the way I see my rock bottom, millions of people see it much deeper and darker than that. Right. Think about right. that. I, I didn't, I didn't OD. I didn't, I just almost took my life. I just was, th I was in the moment. I was just there. Right. Um, I never OD'd. Some people OD 30 times. Yeah. I mean, and then like, die. Story for example. And they don't do it. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've OD'd six times. You have? Oh, gee, I, I didn't know that, bro. Yeah. Wow. But then, like, dude, it, but I think the same way. There's people other, there's people than me who have had way more fucked up shit. Exactly. And, and all it was for us, bro, at that moment in time for us was our perspectives on that moment in time. So if you're not going through the hardest things in your life, but you're just sick and you want and deserve more, or feel that you do, well, one, become deserving of it by doing the work. Two, change your perspective and make yourself disgusted. We were just sick. That's all we were. We were super yeah. sick and tired. That's all we were, dude. It was too painful. It was grow or die. So yeah, your choice, point your option now is grow or die. Yeah, make yourself desperate. You, I would right now. I'd be desperate if I was working at McDonald's. That would be the same perspective as um, what I went through in the past. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All that is is perspective. Change your perspective, you change your outcome. Well, dude, everybody, everybody's rock bottom, and this is a really interesting topic too, because like, and I think about this when I think about parenting a lot. Uh, because like mm -hmm. in an ideal world, you know, I grew up with an alcoholic mother and went through some things, and like, ideally. I would never want my kid to go through any of that shit, but then will he have the right mindset? Bro, me too. That's so here's, funny. Here's, so you had that with your mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was like a, okay. like a low-key fear of mine. But here's the deal. What causes to get to where we are is uncomfortability, right? That can be, be self-imposed in a negative manner like we did. It can also be self-imposed in a positive manner like we have done through our bodies, right? Like that's why running is so great for me because I get to get out there and I get to get uncomfortable and I get to put in the yeah, work yeah. every fucking yeah. day, right? Yeah, my God. Every time you have the ability to put in the work, the ability to get uncomfortable, you have the ability to grow, yeah. right? You yeah. feel an impulse yeah. to eat that candy, to fucking jerk off, to do any of that. <laughs> like when you do not- My guy's going in. When you do not resist the impulse to indulge, you sacrifice an opportunity for growth. That's it. Yeah, my, mm, again, goes back to what a true alpha's concern, growth, bro. Yep, I love that. It. People think they're comfy staying where they're at, but they're actually becoming uncomfortable. Become uncomfortable. You'll do be the, the most comfortable later down the road. Yeah, do, do the hardship. hardship. Do Until the hardship. nothing is fucking hard, you know? Yeah, bro, exactly. You know, people be like, well, how do you do that? How do you do that? Now I'm scared not to do this stuff because I know what will happen if I don't, you know, right. like speak it on stages, stuff like that. Like that stuff gets your little bellies, gets, gets your things going. I have this over deliver sense of urgency all the time, you know? So I put more pressure on me than anybody does, man, with everything that I do. So I always have like fears and, you know, these, these nerves or whatever you want to call them. So I have literally trained myself that when I feel that now I have to do it. You know what I mean? Well, fear, fear, regardless of what type of person you are, fear is 
uh, a compass, right? For people like yeah, you and yeah. I, we run towards it, right? Yeah. For the masses, you know, the average individual, they run in the opposite direction, right? But no matter who yeah. you are, fear is the compass, but which direction are you going to head? That will determine yeah. the results of your life. Yeah, that's fire. You know, I'm like, I'm always referring to this as a vehicle. Yeah. And I've actually been pretty good with it on this. I haven't been doing it too much, but this is a vehicle. And just like the vehicle you drive, bro, that's all feelings are, are sensors. You know, my car, I almost, I almost backed into someone the other day. It was a beep, 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 beep. Your vehicle, which is fear, all these emotions, anger, resentment, whatever it may be, they're sensors to tell you, hey, you got a malfunction over here, fool. You need to get to work. <laughs> Take like it beep, to the mechanic. Beep, beep. Check on it, right? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Check engine. And then what do people do with the vehicle? They got it. Well, I need an oil change. Right? They keep driving. They keep driving. They're doing the same thing with right here. The thing is, it's not as blatant as a check engine light. Or a yeah. cow lamp out, or a beep, 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 you're gonna hit someone. You literally just hit someone in life, you know? Like, and the only way to do it is become really super aware and self in tune with yourself and your surroundings, and, and then learn to listen to the feeling. They're telling you something, man. They're telling you something, and it's up to you what you do. Yeah. You know, you, you can crash, you can crash into that car, or, you know. That's so absolutely it. Dude. So, hey, man, you and I are going to have to do another episode at some point. Uh, you know, I'll do it 100. percent Next time I'm down there, we'll put a bunch of content together as well. But you and dude, I, dude, I'm gonna, that. I'm gonna call you right after this. Actually, okay. We need a three minute phone call. I want to talk to you about something. Done. We'll, we'll just, we'll just stay on the Zoom. Do you want? Okay, we just stop over here. I'll just stop over here. Okay, so for you know, before we wrap up here, right? Like, if you were going to leave listeners who have never heard you before, who are struggling with one, you know, or two little nuggets left, right? Like, what is something actionable that they can run with today? Yeah. Okay. Good one. Especially where we left off. Ready? This is like key. This is key. I don't care where you are, who you are, what you're doing. I'm living by this. I know you're living by this. I know y'all watching this probably aren't living by this and need to live by this. Cause I was at 10 X a few months ago and I was doing crazy shit when I was there. I literally, it was crazy. That's a quick story. Yeah, I, sure. I, I ripped my shirt off in the v VIP section at, as Grant was on stage because he's the only person that can command the 30,000 people to shut up. Everyone else runs around and eats hot dogs and talks, right? But when he speaks, everyone's quiet. So I was trying to get his attention because money follows attention. So I'm trying to get his attention. I rip my shirt off. Long story short, and I'm having a conversation with him. The whole stadium's quiet. 33,000 people. Me and him are looking at each other dead in the eye. He's actually breaking my balls because he don't know who I am. If he don't know you, he ain't going to throw you. So I literally have to catch these balls he's throwing at me and throw them back at him. And we went on for like 45 seconds, but it was like scary, bro. Like it was fearful. But I remember prior to wanting to do it, I had actually talked myself out of it like a bitch. And then I missed that window to do it. And I said, bro, you're a bitch. There's a conversation I had my, bro, you're, you're a bitch, bro. What do you, what's going to happen? You're going to die? You're going to go to jail? What's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen. The only thing's going to happen is you're going to get paid attention. It's the only thing that's going to happen. So if another window opens, you better jump through that bitch. Or you're really, really a bitch. Like you understand your subconscious. Something happened. You slipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to act on your fear. Boom. The opportunity came up like a couple minutes later. I took it. Fire happened. People were coming up to me. Are you that guy? Are you that guy that did that? What's your Instagram? Crazy. It's like cool, like little stuff, right? right? But it was just the fact that I conquered a fear. But somebody asked me there. Someone asked me there and said, what is the one thing you would have done differently in your journey from after you were sober? Not, not when you were on drugs, not when you were retarded. From getting clean to today, 10 years, what's the one thing you would have done differently? And I'm usually super quick with everything, but I wanted to answer this uh, with the best possible answer I could, right? So I spent a couple of minutes, I thought about it, and here's what it was. I wish I had acted on my fears sooner. The reason I am where I am today is only because I started to make videos, only because I started to put out the information that I spoke. When I was worried what people would think of me, going live on Facebook, on Instagram, when I was, I wanted to speak you know, on stages in front of my network marketing company, but I was fearful and they gave me opportunities and I wouldn't take it. I wish every fucking thing I was scared of, I would have acted on sooner. I'd be extremely fucking further. Also blessed that I'm doing it now, but if something scares you, if it, if it excites you, it means you have to do it. It will lead you to your purpose. I can guarantee it. That's good. That's yeah. good. Awesome, dude. This has been a great episode. Tell everyone where they can find you. I'll obviously link it all below, but uh, you know, tell yeah. them. Yeah, 100%. I'll give them another tip here. Ready? 
My name is Phil McCarthy. Boom, enough said, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I, I want to vibe and operate only with fucking people that vibe and operate with me. Like, if I want to know Brody Kern, I'm going to go type in Brody Kern. I'm going to find him. It's the beauty of the internet today. It's easy. So, guys, I got a free fitness call.com. You can, you know, schedule a fucking phone call, a free strategy physique call with me, whatever. But just go on Instagram, type in Phil McCarthy. Go on the, on the internet, type in Phil McCarthy. Because I know that if we didn't put any of that info out, right, the people that are I'm meant to connect with, they're going to find me. Because it's not hard, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Hundred percent. All right, dude. Well, we, I, I appreciate you coming on. We're going to do this again. Yeah. hundred percent, dude. hundred percent. Yeah. Def.